my name's Dave Ford and this is Logan the Whippet and we're out again on another walk on the New Forest. Today we're in the small village of Fritham in Hampshire which is in the northern section of the New Forest. It's a quite beautiful sunny summer's day. Now on today's walk we'll be doing a circular route starting and finishing in the village and as well as some beautiful woodland scenes, we'll be coming across the, the site of an old gunpowder factory. Uh, we'll even come across a building that, well, it looks like a bus shelter in the middle of nowhere, but in fact, it's something completely different. Oh, and a really pretty lake as well. So do join us on our walk. Are we ready to go? Are you ready to go? He's ready to go. Come and join us. We're going to start our walk right by the Royal Oak pub, which is on the edge of the village of Fritham. Established in 1600, it's one of the oldest pubs in the New Forest. And I believe it has appeared in the camera good beer guide for the last four decades. So we may well be popping in there later just to check it out. Right, let's start off with our walk. And uh, we're going to be heading directly straight into the forest and as you can see we've got this really pretty little village green I say we really are right on the edge of the forest and a uh, little car park and uh, that is where we will be heading now the first little anomaly I want to show you on the walk is here it's you could easily miss it it's just by the car park and I'll turn it round there is a little plaque telling us what it is on the face of it it looks like a sort of metal tube and you're probably thinking what on earth is that well believe it or not it's an old post box and it was put here back in the late 1800s uh, really to help the postman because about half a mile down the road there was an old gunpowder factory and it was such a long way for the postman to walk they thought well we'll make it easy for you and put this post here and it has remained ever since now the factory is no longer here and um, what we'll do is we'll take a little wander down this road and explore some more and uh, see what there is there. Well, we're just uh, taking a gentle stroll down a little lane towards the area where the gunpowder factory used to be. So what I'll do is I'll give you a view and I can tell you a little bit about the factory as we walk along. So, so it's called the Schultz Gunpowder Factory this was an ideal location being very very remote and of course it was an ideal supply or plentiful supply of charcoal nearby which was needed in the production of the gunpowder and it was in the grounds of Iwood House which is uh, just beyond those trees over there it was established in 1860 and at one time there were over a hundred people employed in fact it was one of the biggest employers in the New Forest at the time was something like 60 buildings. The uh, factory was named after a chap called Edward Schultz. Now he was uh, a Prussian artillery captain and uh, he basically invented something called smokeless gunpowder. Well, I've got to stop and show those ponies for you with that beautiful purple heather. Isn't that lovely? Anyway, as I was saying, the factory specialised in smokeless gunpowder for, for sporting guns. But in 1918, 29 companies in the industry in the UK merged to form one entity and production here stopped and the factory closed in 1921. And there's very little evidence that remains. Having said that, there is a very impressive pond that has a connection with the factory. So, 
we'll leave these ponies happily munching away and we'll go and have a look at the pond or lake should I say right next to where the gunpowder factory used to be is this glorious beautiful lake so I just pan round isn't that beautiful it's actually man-made uh, I think they established it in 1883 by just damming up a stream uh, and it holds six million gallons of water and it was needed or the water was needed for the gunpowder factory in the production of the gunpowder yeah. and in fact there's a sluice gate just in the far distance but look at those beautiful lilies trees surrounding three sides and if we go for a little wander around here you can see clearly that it is man-made I don't know if it's, well, I say clearly you see my shadow in the background apologies for that but uh, there is almost a natural um, a dam you can see where it's been built but uh, gunpowder factory long gone but this remains absolutely beautiful we'll see if we can get another view we're just going to go for a wander and see if we can get another view from the uh, from the other side we're just going to come around and have another look at this absolutely idyllic lake from a slightly different angle so let me just pan the camera around so you can see what I'm looking a rather old looking tree there it's seen better days but uh, how about this for a view isn't that beautiful gosh and look at the um, colour of those lilies ducks in the background absolutely beautiful everywhere you look gorgeous absolutely gorgeous you fancy a swim legs well we can't sit and watch this beautiful view all day we're going to go back now and join the main Fritham to Frogham track which takes us through some spectacular woodland We're now wandering along this gravel track which is one of the main cycling, walking, horse riding routes across the forest it goes on for some miles and it's just one glorious oak tree after another by the way I apologize as we go along if you hear water splashing around I've, it's such a hot day I've got uh, Logan's special dog water bottle with me now I've just spotted something in a field over my left I'll just turn around to show you there's a in the far distance a little looks like a hillock now I wonder whether that could well be the site of the old magazine for the uh, gunpowder factory there's a gate here it doesn't uh, there are no signs on it so I'm guess, guessing it's accessible let's go and have a look have a little look this looks like a very inconspicuous little hump but I believe that this could well be a magazine for the uh, gunpowder factory let's have a little exploration what have we got round here aha there we go 
I think these days it's used as a <laughs> as a shade for livestock. But there we go. Yep. Well, it was worth having a quick look at. Hello. Oh, you're looking lovely. You'll have to show it to me because I live just down the road. Well, we've had horses go by. And now. <laughs> Morning. 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 <laughs> Well, there we go. To be fair, it's Bank Holiday Monday, but uh, it is a beautiful a little track. Oops! There we go. Drop Logan's water bottle. Uh, yeah, just let me pan round. So on the left, uh, we've got much more of an ancient forest. Lots of uh, oak trees and beech, and that's from memory the amberwood enclosure and then on the right a much younger forest mainly pine trees and it, um, it's noticeable the difference particularly when you look on the ground uh, not that much grows much on the right hand side apart from bracken and what have you but over on the left hand side I don't know if you can see but looking much deeper in it's a different type of forest if you see what I mean much thicker but the ground there's more leaves it's a total different type of environment but it's lovely at the moment see the Sun gradually filtering through quite beautiful right we're kicking on and what's great about this little part of the route as I say it is a hot day but it's nice in the shade and the trees well folks we've just spent the last 20 minutes trying to film these two fallow deer that had these terrific antlers they're, they're very flat type of antler but it was so hard to get close to them, especially when you got a whippet in tow. I did try and get a little glimpse of footage and if it's good enough I'll show it to you in a second. But in the meantime I found some wildlife that's a little bit more stationary. <laughs> now a little, a wander through the forest is never complete without the odd new forest pony or two. And here we've got a little foal with its mother. I don't know how old that one would be. But we're in August now, so a few months I would suggest. Lovely. So we shall continue and we were heading, where are we heading? We're heading from the west towards the east. And we're about halfway through our walk at the moment. Let's see you in a sec. Wow. Now, I don't know if you can see what I can see. Just a pair of antlers right in the far distance. A couple of stags. I can just see their antlers. I wonder if they're going to come out. I wouldn't expect them to see them in the open this time of day. It's what, two o'clock, a very, very warm day. There they go, a bit of wind. No. <laughs> Come on, show yourselves. I can't get any nearer because uh, 
between me and them it's just as mar oh there they go just by the rowan tree oh oh there we go oh just a glimpse just a little glimpse I can see them through the just through the trees I don't know how close I'm gonna get One, two. Well, we've just come out into the open, left the forest track for a second or two, to show you this rather quaint bus stop in the middle of nowhere. Well, obviously, it isn't a bus stop, it's actually an old observation hut which was built here back in the Second World War when this whole area was a bombing range and in fact there was a lovely breeze up here if we come inside, ooh, it's got all echoey there's actually an information board which uh, gives the full history of the place I guess these days I can look through there, it might be used as a shade by ponies. Let's have a quick look round here and see. They apologise if the wind is coming through. Now I don't know whether you can see or not, I'm keeping out the sun if I can, I'll take a photo. You can just about make out the shape of a, the letter V. So I'm wondering if the the guy who built this was obviously confident of uh, confident of victory. <laughs> but while we're up here, look at a lovely view, ponies. Now there is something right in the distance that intrigues me. Yeah, I think we'll go and investigate. Well, I thought I could see some strange objects on the horizon so I've come to investigate and sure enough it's a whole row of beehives by the looks of things right on the ridge there one two three four five yeah right in the middle of nowhere I'm not going to get too close but if I pan round I you can understand why they're here I mean it's just a sea of purple heather in the distance absolutely wonderful view all the way around isn't that terrific beautiful there we go well it is getting very hot so I think we're going to head back in the shade of the forest track. I'm going to very quickly show you this because there's not a lot to see but that believe it or not is a Roman road. Now you're going to have to take my word for it. There's not a lot to see well, apart from some very nice purple heather but just yeah, just on the right hand side, the ground just slightly goes up a little bit and there's a dead straight track along there. But there's not a lot to see, it's all become overgrown. So, in answer to the question, what did the Romans ever do for us? Well, not a lot here really, to be honest. <laughs> folks we've made it back to the Royal Oak pub which means that's the end of our walk enjoying a well-earned pint of their local ale we hope you enjoyed our walk through the forest if you did well please like comment and subscribe and hopefully you'll be able to join us on another walk sometime in the future 
In the meantime, thanks for watching and cheerio. Oh. Luke, you gonna say goodbye? You can't drink this, mate. Oh, that is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Thank you.